you, you know how we go. Sometimes we get real, real deep about things that are not that deep. What's up you guys? It's me, Galen Larris, and welcome back to another dance tips video here on my channel. Today we are talking all about some healthy habits for dancers that can help you level up from the inside out. As dancers, we're often working with other people, whether they be other dancers or choreographers. There's so many people in a team that help it run well when it comes to a production and making sure that you are at your best is one of the best ways to show up best for that team. It also ensures that even though you are part of a whole that you are still putting yourself first where it counts. So in today's video I'm going to share with you some tips to help you make sure that you're you know maintaining healthy habits while you're dancing and doing all the things that you love. Please give this video a thumbs up and let me know down below what is one of the habits that you are going Going to incorporate before I share mine. Okay, let's jump into this. My first healthy habit that I want to encourage all dancers to adopt to level up from the inside out is to make eating explorative and fun. Dancers unfortunately have a history with food that is not so positive all the time. Creating a relationship with food that is fun and gets you excited about what things you're adding to it instead of restricting can make it so that you are actually looking at food simply as what it is. It's just food. The three things that I really focus on adding to my diet are protein, probiotics, and fiber. Protein is gonna help your muscles rebuild when you are dancing so that if you maybe pull something, it heals a little bit faster, but it also helps you build that strength so that as you are dancing, you become stronger and stronger in your movement. The average woman needs to eat roughly 46 grams of protein a day and the average man roughly 52 grams. And a chicken leg has only like 12 grams. You have to eat a lot of protein in a day. It's really hard to reach your protein intake, but trying different things like incorporating a supplement. I like the Orgain organic protein powder. I'll link that down below if you wanna try that. But I like incorporating that into a smoothie in the morning or an iced coffee frappuccino that I like to make so that I automatically get, I think 21 grams in one serving, which is two scoops of the powder. So it already gets me halfway there when I start my day. Other foods that contain protein are eggs and yogurt and beans, lentils. I love a good bean, I love beans. So think about incorporating those more into your diet. Probiotics, for me, I've included them mainly because I have a lot of food allergies and food allergy issues can really get in the way of pretty much everything. So having probiotics helps include bacteria that are in your gut that kind of help your body fight off different allergens and help strengthen your immune system. So if you have not added probiotics, I highly suggest you do. A simple way of doing that is just to eat Greek yogurt in the morning. I, for a while, wasn't eating Greek yogurt because I wanted to stay away from dairy. and. I don't think anything's wrong with that. If that's something that you're doing, that's totally fine because I did that for about two years. But I did find that because of me not eating something like that regularly, I was having more and more allergy issues, having to take Benadryl all the time, and it was just such a headache. And I have seen some improvements since introducing that back into my diet. So yogurt is a really easy way to get probiotics. Another way is to get it through a supplement. No, this video is not sponsored. I'm not mentioning no supplements. Or you can even get it from different fermented foods like kimchi or pickles. Pickles that are prepared fermented, not with vinegar. The third thing that you wanna include is fiber. For me, fiber has been very, very important because it helps me just keep bloating down. It's very hard to dance and feel your best when your body's super bloated and if you are a person who menstruates you understand that it comes at the worst time and then you start feeling like oh my god I look so ugly and it's like you're not ugly you're just bloated and your mind's going through a different hormonal change and so sometimes just making sure that you're eating enough fiber can help you be more regular but also help calm that bloating down a bit. My second healthy habit is to prioritize good sleep 
hygiene. Now, in the world of psychology, sleep hygiene is referred to as having both a bedroom environment and daily routines that promote consistent, uninterrupted sleep. This means that it's not only important for you to go to sleep at a certain time, but it's also just as important to make sure when you are asleep that you stay asleep and that you get some really good hours in there of REM sleep. Something that I am always having to remind myself is that my output needs to be matched by my recovery. And a lot of recovery has to do with sleep. As you guys probably know, having good sleep helps your brain operate better, it helps your mood improve, and it helps your actual physical health, not only in how you look on the outside, but how your organs are working on the inside. And if you are not prioritizing that good restful sleep, then you're gonna be missing out on some of the best dancing you've ever done. To practice good sleep hygiene, try going to bed at the same time every day if you can. Now obviously if you're in late rehearsals or something like that, that might be something that's a little bit harder to do. Something that I do when I know I'm going to be out late dancing is I make sure that I eat before I go to a late dance rehearsal or a late class so that I'm not eating later at night, which will keep my body up. I also try to make sure that I'm staying off of my phone right before I go to sleep and I tend to like sleeping when I have a more cool environment, which is proven to actually help you sleep more restfully. So things like having a fan on, opening your window to let cool air in, or sleeping with your AC can actually help you sleep a lot better. Something that also helps me sleep a lot better is using different sounds, sleep sounds, to get myself in a sleep mood. I like to listen to campfire noises. I love the like crackling sound. I'll try to link the specific one that I really like down in the description box because there's one specific one that I listen to and I think it's like eight hours long. So if I put it on, it's gonna be on the whole time when I'm asleep. My third healthy habit to really help you show up for yourself as a dancer is to really foster relationships with people who are not dancers. In a past video, I talked about fostering relationships with dancers because it really helps you want to come back and show up. But if all of your friends are dancers, you, you know how we go. Sometimes we get real, real deep about things that are not that deep. And sometimes we need friends who don't dance to just kind of ground us and remind us that dance is just a thing. Like everything else is just a thing. Having these relationships for me have really helped me kind of stay grounded and also stay motivated in a way that doesn't necessarily make dance the center focus of my entire life and my entire identity, which is so important if you are a dancer. And then just like you make time for your dance friends, make time for your other friends too. It's 2023, you guys. Even something as simple as a FaceTime can help you remain friends with people who may not necessarily be doing the same thing that you're doing, but I promise hearing what things that they have going on will also make you feel more inspired in what you do. And for me, that's been a huge thing in regards to my mental health. My fourth healthy habit is for my ladies and those who menstruate, and that is to listen to your cycle. I feel like when I was younger, it didn't really faze me as much. Cramps who? Bloating who? Migraines who? Now, I feel like I notice so much just on a week to week how I feel based on where I am in my cycle. And getting to know your cycle more can help you kind of prepare for what's to come because it'll let you know how your body's probably gonna be feeling when that time comes. For me, I've noticed that about a week before my cycle, I will have sugar cravings. This is because your hormones are actually fluctuating and it's actually affecting your blood sugar or your insulin levels. And so your body starts to crave more sugar because it's starting to process that insulin and those sugars a little bit different. And I don't know all the specifics, but here's what you need to know. Eat the sugary foods, girl. Eat the carbs, especially if you are going to be dancing. Being in a long rehearsal with low blood sugars is the fastest way to pass out. Same thing goes for your iron. I also tend to dip in my iron levels. So around the week of my cycle, I eat a lot more red meat. I start to really crave hamburgers and I just eat hamburgers. <laughs> 
like a madman for that whole week. And it really helps me kind of get my energy levels back. So really start to focus on how your cycle is affecting your eating patterns and your energy levels so that you aren't so hard on yourself if you are dancing and things aren't going exactly how you want them to. And maybe other people may be hard on you, but at least you'll know deep down why things are happening. And you know, I'm always the kind of person that says, not everything is an excuse, but it is a reason, you know? And sometimes we have things that we just can't control and we have to accept that. My fifth healthy habit is one I share all the time, but I'm gonna say it again. Make sure you strengthen your muscles to help prevent injury. Stronger arms are gonna make your dancing cleaner. Better stamina is gonna make you pick up choreography faster and stronger legs are gonna make your transitions smoother. And all these things are gonna make you a better dancer. Sometimes the strength that you need to perform the movement at your best is not necessarily strength that you're gonna gain just from doing the choreography over and over again. Sometimes you gotta go pick up some weights. Sometimes you gotta go run on the treadmill for a little bit or walk, you know, whatever works for you. But I really found that strengthening my own muscles, especially in times where I know I'm gonna be dancing hard, I'm always grateful that I did it. And as I'm getting older, this is something that's super important because I don't need any major injuries right now, okay? We're trying to stay as healthy as the Lord will keep me. And that means I need to do my part. And that is it, you guys. Those are my healthy habits for dancers to help you show up for yourself. I know that sometimes as a dancer, what other people think of us can feel like it's the most important thing, but it's really not. You are beautiful just the way that you are. You give so much to the room when you walk into it. And for you to feel that confidence in yourself, you gotta start with what you're telling yourself, what you're feeding yourself, and how you're treating yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And let me know down in the comments below, what healthy habits are you including in your life as a dancer? Doesn't have to be one that I mentioned. I love to hear from you guys. And I'll see you in my next video next weekend. Later! <laughs>